It's the 113th renewal of Army Navy. Before we get out to uh, Vern and Gary, fellas, we've got the Heisman finalists coming in at halftime. I look forward to that. I look you? forward to seeing Johnny Manziel. Listen, if 28-year-old Chris Winkie can win it, let's not discriminate against him. Yeah. I think it's going to be interesting to get their take on which barrier for the voters is going to be broken, whether it's going to be a freshman or a defensive-only player. That's coming up at halftime. But it's game time now. Let's get you out to the men who will be calling the 113th edition of Army Navy, Vern Lundquist and Gary Danielson. Gentlemen, it's all yours. Tim, thank you. We are here in Philadelphia where this game was first played in 1899. And Philadelphia has been the location of more Army-Navy games than any other site. Welcome to Army-Navy, America's Game, presented by USAA. This is the Home Depot College Football on CBS Sports. Today, the 113th renewal of Army versus Navy. And let's go down to the field for the invocation and the national anthem. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the game. Ladies and gentlemen, in keeping with the unity of our armed forces, they continue to fight the war against global terrorism. A joint color guard comprised of color guard members from both the military academy and the naval academy will present the colors of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation led by Father Edson Woods, chaplain at the United States Military Academy. And please remain standing for our national anthem as sung by the United States Military Academy Glee Club. Would you pray with me? Eternal God, source of life, as our nation continues to struggle near and far to defeat those who would destroy our way of life, Army and Navy meet once again on a field of friendly strife. Bless the cadets and the midshipmen of the academies. Give them a deep commitment to service and dedication. May our academies always and forever make this nation proud. Sustain all the members of our armed forces and their families throughout the world, especially those in areas of tremendous risk. Be merciful to those who have given their lives to keep our nation free. Fill each heart in this stadium today with a conviction that what we do here shows the world the deep beauty of a free and proud people. And finally, Heavenly Father, hear once more the constant prayer of our hearts. Bless the United States of America and those who live and die for all time to make it the land of the free and the home of the brave. Amen.
another sellout crowd here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You can expect emotion to play a big part in this encounter. The Home Depot College Football on CBS, Army, Navy. America's Game presented by USAA is sponsored by the U.S. Army. Sonic. The Home Depot. And by USAA. Hello, Mama dear. For over a hundred years, the West Point alma mater has echoed down the long gray line. Now college is from sea to sea. In Annapolis, the Navy blue and gold has roused the yard since 1923. At both academies, nothing rings more true than the hallowed lyrics and notes of the alma mater, abiding soundtracks of valor, honor, and history. It's a hard feeling to describe what it's like to sing those alma maters. When I think of the alma mater, I think of the origins of West Point. I take a lot of pride in singing the alma mater. When that song first comes on, I think of all the other players. And you know, how many before me have sung that who, song? You know, uh, fought and died to be able to sing that song. People like General Douglas MacArthur, General Eisenhower. Medal of Honor winners, Navy Cross winners. It's humbling how blessed I am to play on the same field that these men played on. This game is so important to both sides. This is the big game. This is the game we all look forward to. Bigger than any game. There's no game that's bigger than the Army-Navy game. Army versus Navy, the national standard of football tradition and passion. For all its participants, a privilege and memory that lasts forever. Look across and you see the Corps of Cadets and the Brigade of Midshipmen. There's nothing like it. I can't even describe what I'm going to feel. Uh, honestly, I'm probably going to cry. For both sides, winning this battle offers a unique prize. The alma mater is last word, and the glory of singing second. Ever since I've been here, everybody's trying to say, sing second. You don't want to sing first. Singing second is, is a special honor. At the end of the game, first you'll head over to the loser side while they sing their alma mater. As soon as they sing their last note, it's just a dead sprint over to the other side. And then the winners will sing it second. And as soon as that song goes on, they go wild. It's amazing. It's just an uproar. We've never had that opportunity while I've been here to know what it's like to sing second. I, honestly, I can't imagine singing first. I can't believe this happened again. Then that 10-year drought would mean everything to us. We've been singing second, and you know, hopefully we can keep that tradition going. Let's sing it second. Let's sing it second. You know, we are huge rivals on the field, but after we graduate, we're all, we're all brothers in arms. We're all fighting for the same cause. It's about who wants it more. Your legacy means everything. This is the moment. This is the time. So how do you want to be remembered? Beat Navy. Go Navy. Beat Army. Beat Navy. Beat Army. We will beat Navy. Now the chance to sing second beckons again at the 113th Army-Navy game. And so we welcome you back. Navy 7-4, and four, Army 2-9. and nine. Hoping to end a decade of dominance in this series. And first on the field, the Black Knights. Followed by the midshipmen. Game being played in Philadelphia for the 84th time. We'll have the kickoff between Army and Navy right after this. Welcome to Army Navy, America's Game, presented by USAA. This is the Home Depot College Football on CBS Sports. Today, the 113th renewal of 
Army versus Navy. Hi, once again, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson. Our privilege to be back in Philly with Army-Navy. This has been a decade of dominance for the Navy. They've won the last 10 in this series. That's the longest streak in the history of this rivalry. And Army comes in, Gary, with uh, a 2-9 and nine record for the season. It seems dismal, at least at first glance, for them. Uh, I would think so, too. If I haven't watched a lot of tape of the teams and looking at the records, one team's going to a bowl, the other team has been fighting all all year with disappointments and a lot of things that they thought they could do but when you turn on the tape you find a Navy and Army team that kind of matches up pretty well I think this is really going to be a fair fight the team that makes the least amount of mistakes could win this football game both teams uh, feature the triple option and that means that the quarterbacks are in a sense the commanders of this system uh, I don't think there's any doubt about it if you're going to run the triple option you got to have quarterbacks that not only lead but command the offense Trent Steelman's been doing it for a long time, and he's got a ton of records. He still has a few elusive ones, namely Navy, but Keenan Reynolds is the breakout star for Navy. He took over against Air Force. Since then, the Navy offense has grown. Not only does he run, but he's got a great arm and has really turned this Navy offense on. He's 5-1 and one as a starter. Of course, he's got the big one today where all the pressure is on the young freshman quarterback. But let's be honest, when you start for four straight years, you've lost three in a row. The weight of the Navy record is on Trent Steelman. Can you imagine the pressure of carrying this Army team? Ten straight losses. And remember, it's not just this game. It's the history of this rivalry. And that was Heisman Trophy winner Pete Dawkins. Let's go down to the field for the coin toss. Moments ago, Vice President Joseph Biden was there. Vice Admiral Michael Miller, representing the Department of the Army. Navy won the toss, and they deferred the option. So Army will get the ball. And just a few moments ago, Tracy Wilson with Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Martin Dempsey. General Dempsey, as the Joint Chiefs of Staff and having served in Iraq, what can you say about the importance of this game, not only to the two academies, but to the young men and women serving our country? You know, every year this game seems to get better and better, and I know what the record is, but it's the spirit of the game and the way that spirit defines us as a military. And, and it's the same when, when the other academies uh, get, get after each other as well. It's, it's really about the soul of the military. You graduated from the Military Academy. All three of your children served. Two of them were graduates of Army. So as a parent, how emotional is it to watch this game? Well, both my two, all three of my kids played Division I sports. Two of them in Army, by the way. And, uh, you know, I really think that it's the, the opportunity to represent something like a Military Academy in particular is extraordinary. And it gets them ready for what we're going to ask them to do because conflict is a test of will. And so is sports, and so it's a great thing. Every year we'll get a thousand kids out of each of these academies to provide the foundation of our military. Well, I have to ask you, with your army ties, any impartial at all? No, not a bit. <laughs> you want to break the streak? Uh, we got to break the streak. Uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks so Go much, army. Vern. All right, Tracy. Thank you very much. Skies are lightening a little bit, but it's a murky day. Navy leads the series and, as you know, have won the last 10 games. First game played in 1890. Navy won the toss and deferred. Colin Amaro will kick off, and the deep man is Julian Crockett, number 18, for the cadets. That one floats toward the right side, taken at the nine by Crockett. First contact made in between the 20 and 25. And let's uh, introduce you to the four-year starting quarterback, Trent Steelman. Well, Vern, we were introduced to Trent when we were introduced to the Army game, Navy game four years ago. It was our first game when we visited West Point. We visited with a young freshman, a plebe, they call him Trent Steelman, the leader as a quarterback of this game, and he still is the leader of this game. Yeah, he has, as you uh, heard Gary mention before the commercial, all kinds of records, but he has yet to defeat 
the Naval Academy in this game, and Larry Dixon gets the first carry. Let's introduce you to the Russell Athletic starting lineups. It's Reichert, Allen, Powis, Shoemaker, and Bisgard, the offensive line, the, count, uh, the uh, triple option, Laird and Lawrence, the wideouts. Raymond Maples, 1,000 yards in each of the last two years, and this is Maples quickly. On second down, he gained 22. I asked the Army coaches in our telephone conversation, what's your play? And he says the play that we are most imitated by is our counter. You saw the counter. The fullback goes one way, and they hand back to the counter play, a devastating play. Maples, who grew up in Philadelphia, this is Dixon, the fullback. And let's quickly introduce you to the defense. For the Naval Academy, Henderson, Ring, Polalay, the three front uh, down guys. Drake, Peterson, Warwick, Keenan, Wetzel. Wetzel, first team academic All-American, announced just yesterday, Gaines, Bush, Ryder, and Bertrand. And a huge hole. Over left tackle, and it's Raymond Maples for his second game. Well, they got some new guys up front. Does this Army offensive line through injuries? They've got some players at tackle that aren't their regulars, but the way they handle the ball, they have a devastating rushing attack. The key for Army, turnovers. Can they hold on to the football? There's the toss. It's Maples around the left side, and he won that battle. Forced the Navy defender backward. And that's the changeup. Anytime you have a defense that's standing on the line of scrimmage, ready to read the option, you must come at them with that changeup toss power game. That's how you keep those defensive ends and linebackers honest. Stephen Fraser has come on now, number 27, giving Maples a rest. The changeup for Army is they play their slot backs deeper than the Navy team does so that they can run from that position downhill. They tried to pull back for the third time. Dixon, this time he's met. Yeah, Danny Ring, the nose tackle that time, defeated the middle of that play and made the play inside. That's the key position, right, Vern? They told us both coaching staff said both defenses will start their defense at the nose, putting them right over the center, and that's the guy we must control. Third down seven. You might think pass. You might be wrong. And a good play by Danny Ring again, again. is yes, going to force a, fumble, uh, well, a punt. No, I don't know, Vern. No team goes for it more often than Army does on fourth down. In this situation, you see no cutoff block from the backside from Shoemaker. And on fourth down, I think Army's just going to dial it up. They start thinking four down territory when they cross the 40-yard line on their side of the 50. That's right. For the season, 21 of 40. Second most attempts on fourth down in Division One football. Here's Steelman. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think he got it. That's a stop. This is an ACC officiating crew. Yep, and that's a big stop for the Navy defense. They played four down defense. They had two big stops by the nose tackle. And on fourth down, the pursuit from inside out, it was Warwick that made the, wasn't it? I think it was yes, Warwick it was that made Warwick. the play. Yep, yep. Warwick, who was one of the defensive stars in this game last year with back-to-back -back sacks. So a nice start offensively, but it ended ignobly. Chevrolet, the official vehicle of America's game. Proud to serve those who serve. From supporting the Achilles Freedom Team of Wounded Veterans to offering the best military discount of any car company, Chevy runs deep. See how you can do your part at Chevy.com slash military. Back in Philadelphia and for the seventh time this year, Keenan Reynolds will open at quarterback for the Naval Academy. Five and one as a starter, came on late in the game at Air Force when Trey Miller got hurt and has kept the starting spot since. Noah Copeland is the running back directly behind Keenan Reynolds. Reynolds keeps, looks for a block from Copeland, got a little bit of a fresh block. Let's uh, take a look. Now at the Russell Athletic starting lineups for the Naval Academy, Paulson, Cabral, Fleming, Zuzek and Vickers, the offensive line. 
Brandon Turner, one wide out. Sean Lynch, the other. G.G. Green is senior season, and he's played all four years in this rivalry. And, of course, the Naval Academy has won his first three times out. Look at the little changeup that Navy is giving Army. They know that Army wants to play against the wishbone look. They're giving them a spread look. Northern Illinois State Army has had trouble with spread offenses this year. G.G. Green out on the wing left side. And uh, Reynolds with his first completion defensively now for the cadets. They call this the double eagle flex, and they have given up huge amounts of yardage this year. Watts, Cove, Lever, and Kelly joined by Combs, Bacon, and Meyer, a freshman. And uh, the other group, Jackson, Hayden Pierce back after missing the last six games, and he was a starter before he was injured. Flag is down. Pitch goes to Copeland, the fullback. Out near the 45-yard uh, line, Zach Watts made the tackle. We'll see against whom this uh, infraction is called. Remember, both teams had three weeks to get ready for this game. You could put it in a new offense in three weeks. Uh, you think they have? It's a big wrinkle here. That Navy does a much more spread out than normal. Defense. Number 49, five yards. Replay first down. That's James Kelly, who uh, was offside. And as we mentioned, this is an ACC crew. First down five. Brandon Turner at the bottom of the screen, one of the big wideouts, a great blocker on the corner edge. Copeland gets the give again, and he picks up four of the necessary five. Well, we mentioned that they have been gouged by a number of teams in this two and nine years. A very young Army defense. Look at this, 112th in points per game, 91st in total yards, and way down in turnovers forced as well. Yeah, on the bright side, though, they played their best defense against Air Force, which right. is a similar offense to Navy. Blitz, oh, nice stop, but he may, well, he did get it, yeah, it's Reynolds. And that's the way it should work. If you're running the triple option well, you should be fooling the play-by-play -play man. Huh? <laughs> I was if you're not to... fooling the play-by-play -play guy, you're not a good wishbone quarterback. I was really trying to sneak that one in. <laughs> no, you weren't going to let me, I've been me, with you? you too long, Vern. I've been with you uh, too Oh, yeah. Well, and thank goodness for that. <laughs> First down and ten. And of course, the short, short motion like that is like Peyton Manning taking the snap. What you try to do is determine what the defense does with that short motion and then call the play after that. Reynolds keeps it, flag is down, so is he. Tackle made by Jeffrey Bacon, who leads the uh, cadets in tackles with 123 now. Let's talk a little bit about Keenan Reynolds. I mean, think about this. This is not a freshman. Defense, number 99. Five round penalty. Replay, first down. It's the second time that Army's lined up in the neutral zone, basically. They're trying to anticipate the snap and get off the ball right at the snap and penetrate. Both times now, they've been in the neutral zone. But think about this, Keenan Reynolds. This is not a quarterback that was a went through a, a year of a redshirt and going at maps, playing football, Navy for training. He's right out of high school. That's Copeland. That high school is uh, in Antioch, Tennessee. It's a small town, a suburb of Nashville. And Reynolds said it came down to a choice between Air Force and Navy, and he just felt a more comfortable fit here. He was not offered. Uh, by uh, SEC schools. There was some talk that Vandy was going to offer. They never did. And uh, another uh, story that Georgia Tech was going to offer, and they, of course, run this same offense. And uh, he said, no, that was not the case. Chris Swain is in the backfield now. Here comes Reynolds. Tackle made by Alex Meyer, number 23. Well, it all happened. 
happened in the Air Force game. Of course, we had Navy early against Notre Dame. And, you know, when Notre Dame pounded Navy, everyone thought, okay, that's a good Notre Dame team. And, you know, we wondered about Navy. Well, no Notre Dame turned out to be a great Notre Dame team, and Navy's a little better than we thought. Exactly. That was in Dublin on September 1st. Here's Reynolds to throw deep. Got a man. Oh, good good defense. Yeah. Yes, it was. Intended for Darius Staten. Alex Meyer defending. Yeah, Staten is the slot back that time. Coming right up, kind of a, right up the vertical throw right there. And Meyer latches onto him from the opposite side of the field. I don't think Reynolds even saw where he came from on that play. A big heads up play on his blind side. Finds the guy streaking up the middle. What a nice play. And you can see how that Rich Ellerson defense works. You have to go with the flow. They come with the option to the other side. And nice defensive play again. I was just Alex Meyer, who made the previous play one of three freshman yeah. defensive players. And this is Brandon Fusilier Jeffries, another of the freshman defensive backs. Well, that time Meyer, after playing defensive back and knocking down a pass on one play, comes up and defeats what they call the arc block. The slot back went to his legs, didn't get the block. Good play back to back. They're down seven as we're midway through the opening quarter. And neither team has scored. And uh, this one whistled. Yeah, dead. this one's going to be on Navy. I think they moved inside on the fake blitz. Ball start. Offense. Number 34. Five yards. Still for now. It was Noah Copeland, the fullback, that actually moved a bit. So now it, I think on that play before, Navy and Kenny Neal Malololo's offense was thinking four down territory. Now you wonder if it won't be. And you see Copeland just flinch a bit. Now third down 12. See ya. Keenan Reynolds for the year, 46 of 80 coming into the game. Under some pressure. Yeah, a lot of pressure. That was Jeffrey Bacon, the leading tackler. Middle linebacker, and he got there to make the stop. I think Zach Watts, number 40, forced the play inside, and then it was cleaned up by the linebacker, Bacon, on there. Watts comes in, makes the play, turns him inside. Yes, that's exactly who did it. Watts makes one play, and then his teammate makes the tackle. And that brings on Pablo Beltran, who is having a terrific season as the punter. Josh Jackson is deep. Beltran averaging 45.1. And if he keeps that average up, he will become the all-time leading cadet in yards per punt. Has to head backward to handle that errant snap, and he's really got a good one. It was wow. such a bad kick that it turned out to be a good kick. It did not get any height. The punt returner could not make the catch on the play, and it rolls down to the one-yard line. Well, Joe Cardona, the snapper, didn't help out much either. And Belt, <laughs> and after all that, oh, yeah, 45-yard punt. Ken Niamatololo is in his fifth year as the head coach at Navy. Rich Ellerson, his fourth year at Army. Both are graduates of the University of Hawaii. And at one point, Ellerson coached Ken Niamatololo. The two teams are playing for the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy today. First time since 2005. Here's Tracy. Yeah, that's right, Vern. Navy hasn't won it since 2009. And Air Force, they've just taken it the last few years. And Army hasn't won it since 1996. And as you can see, the trophy is right here, ready for one of the teams to take it. It weighs 170 pounds, and it will be presented at the end of this game. I had a chance to ask head coach Ken Niamatololo about it, and he just told me that it adds such an extra pressure to this game to take Take away the victory today and bring back the Commander-in-Chief trophy, guys. Okay, Trace, thank you. And Army has the ball for the second time, but uh, <laughs> they've got it at their own one-yard line. Give it to the fullback. That's Dixon. They've used that... Uh, option now for the fifth time Dixon five carries for 15 yards 
Larry Dixon is what you call when you talk to the Army people. He's got tailback skills with a fullback body. And when you have the point of this offense having that type of running ability, you've got a good start. Oh, that didn't look right. Boy, it didn't. Nope, he was a little early, too quick for the handoff. Malcolm Brown. In the last three years in this game, there has been 15 total turnovers. Malcolm Brown got there a little quick this time and almost didn't get that handoff. And I'm telling you, Army constantly works at timing and quick ball skills in this option. Here's Maples out of the deep end off. Fumble. Timely commentary, Gary. Let's see if the ball had been ruled down. Oh. It had not, but uh, Patrick Laird, the wide receiver, recovered it. Yeah, remember, third and long is still an opportunity to give that ball and run inside. And this time the ball squirts loose and a big play downfield by Patrick Laird because it was turnovers a year ago that led to 17 points by Navy. That was the eighth fumble by Maples this year. Eight. And uh, opponents that, have recovered five. I think that was Danny Ring again in wow. this game. That's three tackles that he has just manhandled the Army offensive line. When you get that type of play up front where you got in the three-man line by Navy handling the run blocking, it's trouble. Spells trouble. Fullback out to the 26. Larry Dixon, sixth carry. Talking, well, yeah, talking about the ball handling yeah. schools, excuse me, Vern. We got a little shot of what they do in warm-ups. Watch this. Hand to the fullback, toss it to the quarterback, and flip it out to the tailback. Everybody has quick hands. Everybody's handling the ball in every play. It shows you the timing that goes into this offense. And they have lost, as a team, 17 fumbles this year. And they have fumbled once in this game, but they got it back, and they're using their fullback, Larry Dixon, extensively now. That's seven carries already. No score, under four to go. This is a big gamble here, fourth in inches. Wow. Well. They might be giving them, trying to get a jump off sides, or are they going to try to plow forward? This will be a big gamble. They have not been able to handle Danny Ring, and uh, that was a yeah. couple tries. You get one penetrated play by Ring, and it's basically a seven-point decision. So time call by Army, and uh, we'll no doubt kick it away. 3.29 to go. Be right back. NFL on CBS tomorrow afternoon. Lead game, San Diego at Pittsburgh. Jim Nance, Bill Sims will be present for that one. Four others on the list. And then the late game, Miami at the 49ers. CBS, the home of Super Bowl 47. And it all begins with the NFL Today, James Brown and the group. 12 noon Eastern, the NFL Today, presented by Southwest Airlines. Chris Bolt is on to punt. And Sean Lynch. Yeah, keep deep. your eyes open, though. Army is situated where they could still short snap it. They will go for the punt. It's high and not terribly deep, and a fair catch taken by Sean Lynch. That's a 37-yard punt, nothing on the return. Of a very good series, though, for Army. Navy obviously playing great defense. We talked about Danny Ring, but to get that ball off your own goal line, a 27-yard drive and a punt to get it to the Navy's 35-yard line, that's a successful series for Army. Still scoreless in Philly. Navy will have the ball. Tomorrow on CBS, don't miss a heart-stopping final challenge on the Amazing Race season finale tomorrow, only CBS. Well, let's see if Navy tries to settle down. They, they gave a little dif different look to this Army defense. Remember, we talked about the troubles of the Army defense early in the year, Vern. Of the first 32 possessions Army faced in the season, 18 touchdowns were scored against this defense. Mm. On first and ten, it's Noah Copeland, the fullback, number 34. He's a sophomore out of San Antonio, Texas. And Nate Combs, 
makes the tackle. Number 22 for Army. Three minutes to go, opening quarter. No score. Navy has won the last 10. There was a stretch back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, where Army won 9 of 11. So there have been stretches, but this is the longest win streak by either team. James Kelly, number 49, makes the tackle on that one. Really funny that time, Vern. Noah Copeland, the fullback, was upset that he didn't get the ball. Keenan Reynolds did not read it according with the fullback. Watch 34. He goes, oh! <laughs> he turns and actually turns around and kind of looks you know, almost like a wide receiver, like, oh, my goodness. You watch for the give coming back a little bit later on that one. Lost one, third and five. Army thinking the same way, don't you think? Chris Smearland, I am pay out the de defensive coordinators for Army. Remember, when you talk about Army, all the problems they've had, they do feel comfortable against this offense. Mm -hmm. They face it every day. Remember, the last two games, Army has lost. There's the D coordinator. I am Sadat. He's a co-coordinator for this uh, Army team. Has been with Rich Ellerson for quite some time. And Beltran on to punt for the second time. This one a little better. Fair catch. At the 21, Josh Jackson. Now the Navy defense is back on the field. Let's take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. Well, as Tracy heard from the general, conflict is a test of wills. Watch Matt Warwick on first down get run over. But then, two downs later on fourth down, Matt Warwick shows his will and comes back and makes the stop to save the drive for Navy. The test of wills. Steelman goes between his tackle and guard and might have picked up 10 on that one. Bry French, one of the two co-captains for this naval team, makes the stop. Well, remember on fourth down, it was Trent Steelman that ran the option play, but this is his bread and butter. The downhill quarterback keep. He's the leading rusher for Army over 1,000 yards. That's his bread and butter play right there. This time to give is to Larry Dixon. Just to give you an example how prolific this Army rushing attack is. For the season, Army is tied with Oregon. I guess they just passed them because that was a 10-yard rush right. on first down. They each coming into this game had 120 plays, rushing plays, that gained 10 or more yards. There's number 121. There's the pitch. Down the right side, it's Malcolm Brown near the 50. 5'11 senior from Bayshore, New York. That's a pickup of 15 yards. Well, Chevron Lawrence did a great job, the wide receiver down the field, but it all starts with the mesh. Counter option, make a good pitch, get to the end, follow your lead back, and make the play. First down and 10, they'll try right guard. This is Raymond Maples again. Maples, as we mentioned, back-to-back. Thousand-yard seasons for Army. He uh, went to high school at West Philadelphia Catholic, only six miles from this stadium. And a player is down for the Naval Academy. It's hard to see the number. We think it yeah, might it is 50. be. Yeah, it's 50. Bry that's, French, yes. That's who it is. Co-captain Bry French, and uh, we'll check when we come back. Tim Brando in New York with breaking news out of Irving, Texas. Dallas Cowboys nose tackle Josh Brent was charged with intoxication manslaughter after the car he was driving in a single vehicle accident early this morning, which killed passenger and Cowboys teammate Jerry Brown, a member of the practice squad. The Irving Police Department will hold a press conference at 4 o'clock Eastern. We'll have more on this at halftime. Now back to the game. All right, Tim, thank you. Scoreless here, 15 seconds to go. 
in the opening quarter and Bry French on the bench. Take well, a look, Gary. Yeah, the this is an inside running a game, and when you're trying to take on those defensive linemen and running backs, you put all your weight on your foot and you take them on, sometimes you just collapse. Second down and six, and Raymond Maples, who is running very well, gets a first down. Trevez Bush, number nine. Remember, uh, remember now, excuse me, Vern, that this Navy defense and Buddy Green, their fine defensive coordinator, as the quarter ends, realizes that Army just entered four-down territory. The end of the first quarter, no score here in Philadelphia. will return to the city of brotherly love after this message. And a word from your local station. We welcome all of you back to Philadelphia, the 113th playing of Army and Navy. I think you recognize this fella, won the Heisman Trophy for the Naval Academy in 63. Had a pretty decent career there. Went on to play in the National Football League, known as Roger the Dodger. And he demonstrated those skills both at the Naval Academy and with the Dallas Cowboys. Won the Heisman in 63, and that's by way of introduction. Good to have you with us, Rog. I wish I could uh, was as fast as RG3, and I would have been scrambling a lot better than that. <laughs> well, he's going to stay with us for a couple of moments here. And uh, what have you? What is your assessment of the first? Uh, well, they, they're they're just, uh, of course, the turnovers are the key, and Army recovered both of their fumbles, so it's uh, it's going to be a tight tight game. There's a few new plays in there. Army's put in, I think, the, a trap in there, and, but they, you know, they both have triple options, and they they practice, so it's. Uh, uh -oh, it's it. on the ground again. Yep. It's the third one. That, that's, yeah, that's not a good sign when you fumble three times and you recover, though. It's not a good sign for Navy. That means Army's got something going. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like third year. Wow. wow, yeah. And last year, that was the story of the game, the three right. turnovers. turnovers. Right, turnovers, right. Uh, Roger, we're going to ask you to be in charge of the n stealth numbers for Army here today. Okay, we we have no idea what numbers anybody up here. It's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Steelman, and that's Maples. I do have those. Uh oh, down. another fumble. Another fumble. Another fumble. Yes. Oh man. Did and, Navy get it? And you know, that's Russian roulette. Only so many times yeah. can you put the ball on the ground. The defense always has yeah. the advantage with a fumble like that. And that's, uh, when you're running the triple option, it's it's really, that's the, the key is to prevent the turnovers. And uh, early on in the year, that was our problem. And we got it turned around. Uh, Josh Tate is the guy that comes yeah. up and makes the big hit. Yeah. But that was a catch and yeah. a fumble. You know, finally, Army does not throw it much. They get a completion and they get a turnover on a pass. All right. Now, pretty extraordinary that we've seen this sequence of fumbles and uh, the Naval Academy finally gets this one. Well, Roger's going to stay with us and uh, for just a few more moments. Meanwhile, the Naval Academy has the first turnover of the ball game. We'll be right back. While we were away, that fumble recovery by Navy was confirmed by the replay booth. And so the Naval Academy will have the ball. I referred to you as Roger the Dodger. There's this young guy who plays for quarter, quarterback for A&M, Johnny Football, Johnny Manziel. You have a Heisman vote. The announcement will be made tonight. Yeah, in fact, the people in our company are calling me Roger Football now. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got a lot of Aggies at work there, but I... I I you, you, the, I get one vote and you, you vote one two and three. I, I voted for uh, I guess I'm allowed to say this John, uh, Johnny football and I have uh, Teo second. He's what a great year he's had. What a great career and he's a great leader and they're in the playing for the championship and right. so I had them one and two and uh, okay. it'll be it'll be an interesting race. But Roger, he kind of reminds you of yourself, doesn't you think? I mean the way he plays as you look at the monitor uh, right here. He has your kind of style, the way he moves around. Well, he does. I, you know, I, I ran a lot, and he's he can do it all. He can throw, he can run, and uh, he's he's really something special. Uh, he's he's kind of unassuming, but he gets on that field. He's got, but he's you know he's got those instincts. You know, in a right. quarterback, you have right. to have you got to have that feel, those instincts. Well, here is Navy after the turnover. Keenan Reynolds. Not much on that one, but boy, he's been a force he's been a, for the oh, Naval yeah. Academy, hasn't he? Yeah, we were one and three early in the year, and I think since he's been in there, we've uh, it's been a different team, and we ended up, you know, we're six and one since the one and three, 
So he's uh, done a great job with the uh, the triple option. Have yeah. you had a chance to meet him? No. I'm, I'm going to see him after the game and to get a chance to go in the locker room and say hi to him. And <laughs> I don't know if he will remember me, but. <laughs> you know, I have a slight no. feeling he'll know. I played 50 years ago in this I, game. <laughs> believe me, I covered you 50 years in this game. Yeah. There we go. Let's throw it right there, yeah. boy. When you can run the triple option and add the dimension You're of your quarterback yeah. making that throw, this time to Sean Lynch, yeah. totally on the run. I mean, he's, like you said, his instincts of Johnny Manziel. This is what this Keenan Reynolds, I mean, yeah, you did this. Is surprising a guy like Reynolds. He was, at this year, a year ago, time a year ago, he was watching as a high school senior right. this football game. Pretty amazing. Yep, there's some, uh, like Johnny, football Johnny. He, he's a red shirt, yes, though. Yes, yes. Uh, so Did you have any qualms, Roger, about him being a freshman? I mean, you kind of represent this Heisman thing. On I, I, think, the year, on the I think the year he's had in that game against Alabama, it's it's going to be a close race because of the, uh, Teo's great great career and he had a great right. year this year and they're 11 and 0, but. Uh, He's had a, he just had a, he's had a phenomenal did, year. So. Did want to pick your brain a little bit about Trent Steelman, the Army quarterback. Right. I mean, to be a starter four years in this game. Right. I don't know if you had any adversity in your career, so much success, but can you at all relate to what Steelman might be going through in this game? Well, well it's, it's, you know, winning in the Army Navy, the first one I played in, it was the biggest thrill of my life when we, when we beat Army. And, Steelman's had a great career, and he hasn't had a chance to, to beat Navy. So this is, you know, a big game for him and for the whole team and for uh, the service academies. We've been on the roll for the last, it's been 10 years, which is unprecedented. Right. And I told my West Point guys that work in our company and everything, I said, after 15 years, I'm going to start pulling for you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, Give them 15. But I, I think this game, I'm, you know, this, this is going to be a heck of a game today. So right now, you can see their... Uh, Army's out there fighting, so is Navy. Well, Tracy interviewed the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs, an Army grad, yeah. and uh, she said, are you neutral in this game? He said, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Go Army. Yeah. yeah. Do we have to talk about the connection between Vern and Roger? I mean, I think, Vern, did you not announce every one of Roger's football games a a as a Dallas Cowboy? Except his last regular season game. Wow. 35-34 over the oh, Redskins. Over Redskins right. Our buddy Brad Sham was doing that. I was yeah. off in Tokyo for some reason. But we became friends when, when he and Marianne moved to Dallas. And it's a friendship. Yeah. Nancy and I have become, uh, dear, uh, remain dear friends of Roger yeah. and Marianne. Well, I, I uh, feel the same. And I'm, I'm still nervous up here with you guys with this game. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, into, I'm into this, <laughs> into the game. So All right. You want to get, you want to get rid of me now, don't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait and see how this okay. one plays out. Uh, yeah. Strung out very nicely that time by the Alabama, excuse me, the Alabama, the Army defense. And that's the option. That's the option football. If you can get it to the sideline and run in the secondary to the football, everybody's doing their assignment. Pitch it out, knock it out to the next guy. That time, Aiden Pierce put it out to the next guy, and then the pursuit from inside out makes the tackle. Third and five at the 29. That run by G.G. Green. This is Green. Nope. I was trying to think also uh, back to your days at the Naval Academy. It, Steve Belichick was a coach on that staff, wasn't he? Do you remember Steve? Uh, oh, yeah, Steve Bill was there. being there Bill, and everything yeah, all, like that? Bill used to be out of practice all the time. Steve was there 30 years with Navy, and he and, he and his dad were very close. Out on the right side, that, that one is play. complete. Matt Aiken. There's a nice story. Matt Aiken, we did the Navy-Notre Dame game that I'm sure Roger would like to forget. And <laughs> Aiken was injured for that game. Even asked about being a redshirt this year, was told that he could not unless he left school, kind of got healthy again, and back in there playing right. this football game. First down 10, Naval Academy, no score. Early moments, second quarter. 10-20, the clock still running. And Keenan Reynolds leading this drive. Roger, was it uh, Naval Academy all the way for you, or did you entertain any other thoughts of going to any other colleges when you were coming out of high school? Yeah, I, I had signed a letter that if I went to a Big Ten school, I was going to go to Purdue. So I it came down that. to Purdue, and uh, 
in uh, in Navy, and it. Um, well, I, had, you know, I had heard Purdue. that. I had heard that yeah. you and Bob Greasy were in the same signing class at Purdue. Yeah, he would have been a year behind me. So I got you. He, he probably would, he wouldn't have started. No, no, he'd been on the bench. He'd been playing basketball. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That so was that, Noah Copeland with the carry. <laughs> so that uh, undefeated streak for the Miami Dolphins right, would yeah. be history, oh. right? <laughs> Well, what do you think about this? This is a great one? drive right now. This is uh, this is the triple option that's best right now. So that's GG Green. Yeah. Pull back, Copeland. Yeah. There he goes. Touchdown, Navy. Well, you string it out, you string it out, you string it out, and the first option is the fullback, yeah. and that was a beautifully run drive. Nobody over the center this time. It looks like Gibb, even from the pre-read that time, I think Keenan Reynolds knew it was going to the fullback all the way. And after the turnover, a nine-play drive, and a turnover leads to points again for Navy. Here is the extra point. And when I say again, I mean a continuation from last year's game. Nick Sloan. Well, look what happened. You come by and drop in for a visit. Um, yes. Bingo. There they go. <laughs> well, it's great being with you. And, but you get the fullback working like that in the triple line. That's that's uh, that's the great sign you yeah, have to have. Pretty and, easy. I gotta say. Yeah. Roger. Thank okay, you. It's great. Great being with Love you. Love the family. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Look it up, Thanks, thank Roger. You. Thanks. You bet. Look it up. Let's take another look at the touchdown. And like I said, I think that was a little bit easy for Keenan Reynolds. He knew where it was going. Coach Nee? Yes. Tim Brando with this Heisman Watch presented by Nissan. It's the ultimate Heisman Watch. The three finalists are right here in the studio, and we'll be talking to them at halftime. You don't want to miss it. Now let's get you back out to the game. All right, Tim, thank you. 7-0. And uh, that Heisman presentation will be made tonight. Colin Klein had a terrific year. Johnny Manziel, redshirt freshman quarterback, and uh, the heart and soul of this wonderful Notre Dame team, Manti Teo. We got to see him in his first game this year, 50 to nothing, as Notre Dame defeated Navy yeah. in Dublin. They were 51-10, right? It was the end of that game. What a what a, a football game, and they have turned out to be for real. So 7 well, nothing on that last uh, really well-executed drive. Yeah, I, know, I think it was the pass, to tell you the truth. The pass to Matt Aiken on the run that was really, I think, the key play. That really rattled the uh, Army defense. They started to spread out a little bit more, and then the fullback became available. 7-zip, 9-27 to go, 66 yards. In nine plays, and Noah Copeland, the fullback, got the TD from 12 yards out. Crockett at the 20. And he's down at the 27. Jared Fair made the stop for the Naval Academy. Well, here was the pass, Reynolds to Aiken. Got the first down, and then Noah Copeland bangs in from 12 out, and the midshipman leads 7-0. been focusing on defense and pounding that point home and getting ready for Navy this week, but I'm not sure it's going to work because Navy always has something in its back pocket. Operation Dowser. I'm not quite sure what that is, but I am sure we're going to find out. Look, Navy is creating an ocean and the land lovers are scattering. A nuclear-powered submarine as the submarine force crashes through the Army defense once again. Now, Gary said he'd just as soon not tell us straight that one. So. <laughs> it worked, though, didn't it? It did. 9-19 to go. Navy leads it by seven. Army has the ball. Trent Steelman back in at quarterback. He's still got it. Yes, he does. Bread and butter. That's the play. Gain of 20. 
You fake it to the fullback, and then you get the lead block coming to on the side. You just follow it down. He could have got up the outside. He actually ran into his own receiver downfield. He might even made a bigger play. And they'll go in a hurry. The handoff this time, and there's a huge hole left side again. It's Maples. Well, these 2,000-yard runners, Steelman and Maples, getting big yards in this one. Well, our Army's already rushed for almost 150 yards in this football game. There was some talk this year that the Army team, if they were hitting on all cylinders, could rush for 5,000 yards. Wow. They well. had a lot of people coming back, and they're good at what they do. It's just been turnovers all year, right from the start. Their opening game against San Diego State, three fumbled uh, quarterback center exchanges by your senior quarterback and center. It kind of went downhill from there. They played the great game, though, against Boston College. Right. That was the one game that really turned it, and of course, Air Force. The two wins, Air Force and BC, they were humbled in their last outing. Well, I'll I, I tell you, this guy is playing a great football game. Danny Ring again. Crashed from his defensive end position that time, beat it across the line of scrimmage and make the stop on the counter play. Watch Ring just hit it and make the play. Actually, he was at nose tackle again. I thought he crashed. He just stood up the center and made the play. Third and four, first down. Maples again. Now, Bry French, uh, Finch was helped off the field. Let's get an update from Tracy. Yeah, guys, it looks like one of the captains for Navy, French, will be on the sideline for now until he feels like he can actually get in. They took him into the locker room to check what looks to be like an Achilles injury. They taped up his ankle very tightly, but no word on whether he'll be able to return. He keeps just running back and forth. He's on the sideline right now to see if he can get back in there, guys. Okay, thank you, Trace. Larry Dixon with yet another carry. Maples has 76 yards. Steelman has 35, and Dixon with 33 here. Well, you know, Army is, is a bit unfortunate and fortunate at the same time. Uh, have the ball on the ground four times. They've lost one. They're moving it at will. Steelman, pitch, lead blocker. This is Malcolm Brown. Cannot run the triple option any better than this. This is how you go on training film like this. Fake it to the fullback, get the fullback tackle. Actually, it was the slot back. The fullback is leading this time. Dixon is on the arc block. It was the counter option that Army was running. And a gain of 14 and a first down 10 for the cadets. They'll try the middle. It's Maples. He's down to the 11-yard line. Cody Peterson and Trevez Bush, their defensive work. 28 runs, one pass. That's a, that's about the proportion they use. Well, again, against Northern Illinois, Northern Illinois Army ran 90 times and ran 86. Only four passes. Right. Here's Steelman, touchdown, within an extra point of tying the game. That was a beautiful drive by Army. Same play, quarterback lead. Follow Malcolm Brown right into the end zone, and on that drive, remember we talked about Army leading the country in plus 10 runs? They had four of them on that drive. Bad snap, but a good hold, and Eric Osteen knocks it through to tie it up with 6.20 to go. That's the 46th rushing touchdown for Trent Steelman. He surpasses Heisman Trophy winner Glenn Davis from the mid-40s. Tim Brando with a reminder coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Spencer Aaron and I will chat with the Heisman finalists, Johnny Manziel, Manti Teo, and Colin Klein join us in the studio. Now let's get you back to the game. 7-7, seven, seven, the touchdown coming from senior quarterback Trent Steelman. 
And let's uh, take another look from our Avis action cam. Well, to run like this, you need help from your inside guys. Watch the two guards, Steven Schumacher and Frank Allen, as they do a great job. Allen manhandles, and Schumacher sees the linebacker run away out here and says, I'll go to the next level. Once it goes to the next level, he fields off the safety. The guards, perfect execution. And the 11-yard run from Steelman concludes a 75-yard drive in nine plays, so uh, that Navy lead did not last long. I mean, think about it. Army's rushed for close to 200 yards in this first half. Mm. Eric Gostein will kick off. And uh, Steelman's 17th rushing touchdown ties a school record set back in 2004. Never forget, Gary, that we talked with him before his yep. first yep. Army-Navy game. And uh, we really watched him go into a young man. Yep. This one will come out. Ryan Williams Jenkins. Here we go. This football game has started now. There is going to be collisions the rest of this game. Uh, Got a sports fan on your gift list? CBSSports.com shop has officially licensed NFL gear and NCAA gear from over 500 schools and three-day shipping on every order at shop.cbsports.com. Now, what does Navy have to think about doing? They have to not get caught up in the physical game. They have a better throwing attack. They can play a little bit more finesse. They must keep Army off grab balance, and they do. Nobody open for Reynolds. Now he fires it sidearm and makes a completion to G.G. Green at the 31-yard line. It shows you the added dimension and why Keenan Reynolds, that was an interesting uh, point in the season that uh, when Reynolds went in and replaced Trey Miller, it was in the fourth quarter of that game. They actually were down eight points when they went to the true freshman. Trey Miller got nicked, and there was a decision whether Trey Miller could come back in Coach Niamatololo said, no, let's go with the freshman. He went in there, won the football game, and he's had the job ever since. Now, that was an overtime win to their force. It really turned the season around for the Naval Academy. And they wound up winning it on a recovered fumble in the end zone in overtime by Jake Zuzak, number 64, the right guard. It uh, fortuitously fell right at his feet. He understood the nature of the game, so he falls on the wall. Grabbed it. And we mentioned a while ago Raymond Maples from uh, Catholic High School in North Phil in West Philadelphia, while his high school teammate was Jake Zuzek. Copeland having a fine day. Yes, he is. And you can see the push got into the second level that time. The fullback. It appears to me that Army is going to test the patience of Navy and whether they're willing to run the fullback over and over again. They're concerned about the edges, and they're willing to give up the fullback a bit if Navy is consistently willing to do it. And yeah, now well, Navy's got signs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good-looking signs, though, aren't they? Don't you think? On second and two, Reynolds met and dropped. Robert Coe, number 99, the first one there. Coe had a great game against Air Force. Watch that tape a little bit. He had three tackles for a loss in that football game. And you can see the penetration that time. They had that quarterback follow play, and that was blown up inside to the Army defense. Big series here for Army, because remember, Navy gets the ball to start the second half. Thus a big play, third and two. Chris Swain is the lone running back now. That's G.G. Green. They'll go the other direction, the pitch. Swain. Oh, he got it. Yes, he did. It is so interesting to watch defense with teams that know how to defend this option attack. The Army defenders, even though the quarterback had the ball, were running to the pitch man. Jeff Bacon wasn't even looking at the quarterback. His assignment was the pitch man, and he was running right at him, even though the quarterback, Reynolds, had the football. First down, 10. Oh, money low, oh, money low. Oh, money low. 
Copeland back in at fullback. That's a game to the 50. Copeland. Well, we had a chance to chat with uh, Keenan Reynolds earlier this week. And he said he was kind of a spread formation quarterback, right, in right. Antioch High School or in Antioch. Uh, but then Nehemiah Lolo talking about the presence and the command he had in the huddle. Well, he was good with us. I mean, gee. Yeah. I mean, and Vern was throwing some brutal questions. Oh, out. yeah, I'm, really, uh, <laughs> I'm an interrogative specialist. <laughs> hey, 60 minutes. I don't know why they haven't called me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Noah Copeland with the uh, carry again. Again, you can almost see the game plan for Army. Yes, I mean, they're not giving yards to the fullback, but they're looking at all the possibilities, and they're going to say, are you patient enough, Navy? Are you willing to run your fullback enough? Because we're going to continue to run to the edges and try to stop that option game on the outside. Another third down, third and two. And another first down for Navy. It's Copeland. That's his 14th carry of the first half. Richard and, Glover made the tackle. Yeah, and now the clock becomes a factor here. I mean, you know, it's not going to be much of a passing attack, but I think Navy and I and Ivan Jasper, their offensive coordinator, is going to have to think, do I need to throw the ball a couple times here with under two minutes to go in the half? Got all three timeouts, though. Right. Here's the pitch. Nelson with the block. G.G. Green gets the toss and keeps his balance for another two or three yards. I tell you, Brandon Fosler Jeffries, the free safety, ran that one down and just a little bit too much speed for G.G. Green. He couldn't make the tackle. We are back in Philadelphia, and a reminder of the Geico Halftime Report coming up. We'll have the uh, three finalists for the Heisman Trophy in the studio with Tim and Spencer and Aaron. That's coming up just a few moments from now. 1.35 on the game clock. 7-7, Navy and Army. And the ball second down at the 36. One thing to think about, Army challenges the corners on this football team to play man-to-man -man coverage. Josh Jackson, Chris Carnegie are out there usually going man-to-man -man because they're loading the box, and here comes the passing game. Yeah, Copeland back to block. Reynolds goes deep. He's got a man open. G.G. Green incomplete. It was a perfect throw. G.G. Green ran the infamous wheel route. He came in motion, sprinted to the sideline, and just kept going. Brandon Fusler's Jeffries, number 30 that time, had the motion man. Watch the motion comes across. Jeffries takes him, cuts underneath it, and he's gone. Should have been caught for a touchdown. Yes, it should have. Fusler Jeffries was close, but uh, that uh, should have been six. Reynolds on third and four. Oh, gosh. He had him, didn't he? Yes, he did. I thought so. Well, another one. He finds Bo Snelson, number four, co-captain of this Navy team. Snelson, fiery young guy. I think Brandon Turner or Casey Bellina, I'm not sure which one it was, was wide open down the middle of the field first, coming right down the middle. I don't know who it was. Yes, right down. See how open he is? But Reynolds could not find him, came to the second level, and made the play. Two timeouts left. And still run the football here. And a first down 10 in the tie game. Whiteside is uh, in the backfield number 29. Copeland up the middle to the 14 yard line. Jeffrey Bacon made the stop for the cadets. Collision, Reynolds stopped. Ooh, Blown up inside that time. I think it was big 99, Robert Coe that time. 
Jericho hit the attacked it made the play inside and forced the pile that time to be cleaned up and Jeffrey Bacon came and uh, helped out after Cole made the initial contact interesting that Navy did not use a timeout there right I'm surprised third down four Reynolds across the middle that was tipped yes it was I think it was Nate Combs, wasn't it? It Got was, Terry, yes. Head up the middle, jumps up. I don't think it would have been completed anyway. There was good coverage downfield. Hayden Pierce, number nine, had good coverage. And Combs, the captain, came through. And so Nick Sloan comes on to try and break the tie. Sloan was in a kicking competition with five others back in August. Won it, and at one time was perfect. He's 9 of 13 now. Make it 10 of 14 for Nick Sloan, a freshman from San Diego, California. It was a nice answer drive again by Navy. Put three points up. Remember, they get the ball to start the second half. 25 seconds to go. Navy comes back 10-7. Let's hear from Keenan Reynolds. I'm Keenan Reynolds, and I'm the quarterback for the Navy mission. When I graduate, I want to be a naval aviator. Go Navy. Beat Army. Navy gets a field goal from Nick Sloan. They lead it 10-7 with 25 seconds to go. Well, the BCS lineup has been set. On the 1st of January, Rose Bowl, Wisconsin, Stanford. On the first, also Northern Illinois, Florida State. And you've got Louisville, Florida, Oregon, Kansas State, and the big one, Notre Dame versus Alabama. So that leads us to our Facebook poll. If Ohio State were bowl eligible, which team would be left out of the BCS championship game? This is just a... Oh, that'd be controversy, wouldn't it? Started controversy. Yeah, that's fun. And you can log on to Facebook.com slash a game of honor to make your voice heard. I think a lot of people would echo Steve Spurrier. I would vote differently if I know my vote is going to be made public. Uh huh. Here's the kickoff. Julian Crockett, number 18. And flags. Yeah, that, that might put it out just far enough where Army is brave enough to try to get a deep pass. Personal foul, face mask. Kicking team, number 54, 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. That was A.K. Akunko, a freshman linebacker from Arlington, Texas. Guilty of the face mask infraction. We have to say, it must have been obvious because there were three, yes, yeah. very obvious. Yes. Everybody threw their flag that had one out there. You know, in 19 seconds, do you try to throw a deep ball here and steal three points, or do you just get it to halftime? Well, they spread them out. And they run it. Quarterback draw. Not bad, though. No. Nope. Clock is going to stop now. They can either spike the ball very quickly and get a play, or they can call a timeout. They're going to call a they timeout. They will use the timeout. So now, one timeout remaining. Excuse me, Vern. I, now I don't think there's going to be any fear if an interception happened. Steelman put him in position to get one more try. We're back in Philadelphia. We put that red line at the 20 because uh, Osteen, Eric Osteen, the field goal kicker, his longest career kick is 37 yards. So for him to equal that, they would need to get to the 20 on this play. Steelman deep nice right throw. He's got a man. Get out of bounds. Nice throw. Siobhan Lawrence does with seven seconds left. Now with a timeout, do you take a throw in the end zone? I say a quick run and kick the field goal, but a great throw by Trent Steelman that time. Got it outside to Lawrence, and Lawrence gets out of bounds. Should have one run play, one running play to center the ball. In the box, in the box. 
And Steelman will keep it. And now a timeout. Oh, what a nice drive. Yes. All set up by the face max penalty. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything's possible here. And not the great field position. But Army has a chance to tie up this half. Well, Osteen, we assume he is going to be the one to come on, has kicked only one field goal this year. He took over in the Temple game. He's a senior out of Augusta, Georgia. Gochowski, Daniel Gochowski was the field goal kicker, but uh, had a tough year, 10 of 16. So here comes Osteen with a chance to tie this up. And it would be the longest of his career. Yeah, but I don't think you're a kicker if you can't make a 40-yard field goal. I, I know he might not have tried one, but I mean, I think any college kicker can kick the ball 42 yards. It won't be because of distance. Chris Bolt will hold it. Frank Siva is the snapper. Yeah, Matalolo's going to freeze him. Kenny Niamatololo, a native of Hawaii. This is called a segue in the business. Monday on CBS, the 5-0 team gets caught up in the jungle on an all-new Hawaii 5-0 Monday, only CBS. And Army will try a... <laughs> How about if that left shoe is regulation? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's officially going to be called a 41-yard effort. 6-1 senior from Augusta's second career field goal. Yeah. Niamatololo is not going to leave halftime with three timeouts on the board. That's his last one. can't ice a cadet. That's a, I was wondering about that. You know, look what they've you, been through. You definitely can ice a guy from Hawaii. <laughs> in Philadelphia, I think you can. <laughs> well, Osteen's got the time to smile. Or the uh, comfort level to smile. <laughs> now then. Now, good hold. Will it stay inside? He gets the skinned pump. in. Yes, indeed. It's skinned in. Let's say this. He wouldn't have made it from 42. Steelman led the charge. A bad snap, but a fine hold by Chris Bolt, the putter. Easy. And it was hooking out. Or not quite. But snuck in. It did deflect off the upright. But what the heck. And Tracy's with Rich Ellerson. Coach, an important score there. A big stop on the other end. You told me this team needed to play with a chip on their shoulder. Are they doing that so far? Well, they're playing hard. They're they're in the game. Now, we're not playing as well as we need to. We've we've got some things we've got to clean up on defense. We've got to consistently take care of the ball on offense. But we're doing a lot of good stuff. We're competing hard. Now we just play a little bit better. Well, you have 30 minutes left to break the streak. So what's it going to take? Can't wait. Just the same things. Again, take care of the football. We're going to be productive on offense and again defensively we just that's assignment football appreciate it thank thanks you. so much Vern Tracy thank you so smiles among the cadets they tie it up against the midshipmen 10 10 let's go back to New York here is Tim Brando thanks Vern sad news again in the NFL for the second straight week this time in Irving Texas Dallas Cowboys nose tackle Josh Brent was charged with intoxication manslaughter after driving a car that was in a single vehicle accident early this morning, which killed the lone passenger, Cowboys teammate Jerry Brown, a member of the practice squad. Here's what Irving, Texas, police spokesman John Argumentez had to say a short time ago.
It appears as if he was uh, traveling at a high rate of speed, at which time his vehicle touched or impacted the outside curb of the service road, causing his vehicle to flip at least one time. When our officers got there, they made contact with Mr. Um, Price Brent, who was responsive and talking to our officers. He was standing outside of the vehicle. Um, he was determined to be the driver of that vehicle. Um, our officers also located a, um, a Larry Brown Jr. who was lying on the ground and he was unresponsive. It was confirmed that it was Jerry Brown. The Cowboys departed on a team flight today for their game in Cincinnati on Sunday. The players were told of what happened just before takeoff. More on this story tomorrow on the NFL Today. We'll be back in a moment. CBS Sports presents the GEICO Halftime Report. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the GEICO Halftime Report. I'm Tim Brando at halftime of the Army-Navy game. The Heisman Trophy will be awarded just a few hours from now, and we are honored to be joined by the finalists. Texas A&M's Johnny Manziel, Manti Teo of number one Notre Dame, and Colin Klein of Kansas State. Welcome, guys. It's great to have you here. It really is. Let's start with Johnny Football himself. How does it feel to be a freshman in the running for an award that a freshman's never won before? Well, what a blessing and honor it is to be here in the first place with a group of great guys I'm getting to know over the weekend and really get to hang out with them. It's been, uh, it's been an honor, and honor to, just, uh, to be in the same sense as these guys. I'm really humbled by it. Mm. Johnny, you put up historic numbers, pulled off one of the biggest upsets of the year, and fans kind of fell in love with your playing style. I described it as jazz, you know, with a definite starting place, kind of in, improvising in the middle, and ending up someplace. How would you characterize your style of play? I think you, I think you nailed it. Uh, you, you did a good job at defining that, but there's definitely times where I'd rather sit back there and, and be like Colin and just deliver strikes all over the place. But uh, uh, you got to improvise sometimes, and it's it's kind of it's it's helped us out throughout the year. Now how about an encore? What do you do for an encore performance? Hopefully, we we, we go into the Cotton Bowl and take care of business against a good OU team. I know our whole, whole team's looking forward to that. Yeah. All right. Enough about these offensive guys. Now, man, <laughs> historically, defensive players never get some love. Although Woodson did one at '97, he played some wide receiver and special teams. There's never been a defensive player solely that has won the Heisman Trophy. What would it mean to you to be the first? Uh, it would mean a lot. You know, to me, not only for myself and my, for my family, but for Notre Dame. You know, Notre Dame is such a big part of my life and a uh, big part of my family. And, uh, you know, for me to bring that attention back to South Bend, you know, is, is what really means the most to me. All right, fair enough. Uh, after the Heisman, there is a bigger goal here. What are your thoughts on playing for the BCS National Championship? That's, the, that's something you dream of when you're little. Yeah. And for me to actually be playing in that game you know, is definitely a dream come true and uh, something I'm really looking forward to. And, you know, really looking forward to being with my team and, and you know, getting, getting after a really good Alabama team. Have you asked Manziel for any advice on how to beat Alabama? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, hinted, I hinted to it a little bit. His, his, his loyalty to the SEC is a little too uh, strong. Uh, <laughs> already. <laughs> Colin, a lot of naysayers felt that Kansas State couldn't win the Big 12, but uh, talk about the season you guys had. It was special, wasn't it? No doubt about it. I know... Uh, uh, just as any anyone anybody here would say when you know you have a great season of when a team really comes together and, and mm -hmm. we're just a bunch of guys that uh, truly care uh, have bought into you know coach Snyder's system and worked really hard and uh, you know when, when that happens it's pretty special and, and this year is a testament to that and uh, I'm just so grateful to be a part of it and, and all of our coaches that have worked so hard so it's, it's been great. It really was a magical season. I hate to be a little bit of a Debbie Downer but except for that hiccup against Baylor you guys would be playing in the national championship against Manti. Have you been able to put that in perspective or does that still bother you? Oh I think I mean uh, definitely something like that I mean is, is something that we'll, we'll all remember forever mm -hmm. um, but I mean coach told us after the game and you know uh, life's not going to go perfectly. I mean, you're going to have to deal and, and, and face some hard things. Um, and, and we as a team uh, would, would be defined, and as individuals, we will be defined of how we moved on. And uh, I think uh, I'm just so proud, again, of the character of our team, being able to jump back on the horse and, and, and finish like we did against Texas. So.
Johnny, I got another question for you. I've known uh, Kevin Sumlin for a long time, and I know he's one to hold steadfast to his rules regarding freshmen and the media, uh, not allowing you to speak until like two weeks ago. Uh, how was that, and what it's been like since that time, now that you're able to articulate what the experience has been like? Has it been kind of a release? Uh, it's, it's let me focus. During the season, let me focus just yeah. on uh, trying to win games. I mean, you're in the SEC. It's, it's not an easy task week in and week out. So uh, for me to not have to worry about talking to the media, uh, it was nice. It was nice to just relax and, and worry about school and worry about football, and that's all I really had on my plate. All right, man tied. Notre Dame's had seven Heisman Trophy winners. Tonight you have a chance to be the eighth. Go all the way back to National Letter of Intent signing day four years ago to sitting right here at this desk right now. How do you put your experience at Notre Dame into perspective? I don't think you can. Yeah, I, I don't think you can. You know, with, with you know, the things that, that I've been through and that our team's been through and that the program's been through, uh, for me to be sitting here amongst all of you and these two guys who I consider my friends and you know, just a couple of days ago were total strangers that you know, I, I watched and watched highlights of. Um, you know, it's definitely a dream come true for me um, and to you know, be a Golden Domer. Um, <laughs> I think that's the best title that you know, one could ever hold as a Golden Domer. So I think it's just a dream come true for me. This one's for all three of you. We've got a couple of seniors here and a freshman. Does any of that matter anymore when determining the Heisman? I'd like to hear from all of you on that. I don't think so. Uh, I think, uh, <laughs> obviously, that's going to be my answer. Uh, and you're sticking to it. I guess I, like I, I guess I have to. Is perspective different, though, when you're a senior on the Heisman? Uh, I don't think so. You don't? Yeah, I really don't think so. I think uh, the Heisman goes to, I'm obviously the best player in college mm -hmm. football, so mm -hmm. I don't think so. Last question. I want to put you guys a little bit on the spot here. If you had a Heisman vote, mm -hmm. each one of you individual, all right? If you had a Heisman vote, who would you pick? So I'll go first. I would, uh, I would give my Heisman votes to my center, Patrick Lewis. That's uh, uh, he's uh, got a career in politics. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I like uh, it. He's, he's one of a lot my favorite shotgun, people on the team. A lot of shotgun in that offense. Yeah. Manta? I think, you know, for me, since he's going with his center, I would go with my nose guard, you know, Lewis Nix. You know, he, a linebacker isn't anything without a, a great D-line. And so for me to be standing behind him and Stephon Tewitt and Captain Lewis Moore, mm -hmm. uh, they're the whole reason why I'm here. <laughs> I'm going with my whole team. You know, quarterback's no good without a center. His mm -hmm. offensive line, running backs, and, and uh, without a good defense to support you in critical situations, you're done. Safe to say all three of these finalists <laughs> know where the collective bread is buttered nicely by the team. Well, thank you, fellas, for being here. It's great having you. Thanks, Thanks for watching the GEICO Halftime Report. I'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents the GEICO Halftime Report. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. It is halftime at Army Navy, presented by USAA. This is America's game. 10-10, Navy and Army. Next Saturday, relentless Leo Santa Cruz defends his Bantamweight world title when he takes on undefeated Alberto Guevara. Live from the L.A. Sports Arena is Showtime Boxing on CBS. Vice President Joseph Biden goes from one side to the other. This a tradition at Army and Navy. 10-10. Should be a heck of a second half. Glad you're with us. Back after this.
Halftime in Philadelphia. Let's quickly go down to Tracy Wolfson. Coach Keenan Reynolds making his first Army Navy start. He's a freshman. How has he handled the pressure so far? I think he's playing well. He's taking care of the football. He threw some balls, gave us a chance. You know, we got to keep throwing the ball. You know, they're playing a bunch of man to man. We'll keep taking some shots and hopefully we'll get one. But he's playing well. Army has been able to run the ball, though, over 200 yards rushing. Probably not surprising with the way they run the ball all season long. But defensively, what adjustments do you have to make? Well, we are backers are scraping out a little bit too quick. You know, they're running a lot of power stuff at us. We just got to settle down. You know, fortunately, we're keeping them out of the end zone. This is where we were at last year, tied at halftime. We got to find a way to finish. Thanks a lot. Kern? All right, Tracy, thank you. Navy will get the ball. Remember, they won the toss and deferred their option to the second half. And so Army will kick off the Navy. And the cadets trying to break a 10-game losing streak. Marcus Thomas and Joffrey Whiteside are the deep men now, and this one will not be returned. It comes out to the 25-yard line. Well, Gary, you said uh, a couple of hours ago you expected a fair fight out of this. That's what we've gotten. We, we really do. I mean, who's going to crack? You could hear Coach right there talk about that Navy will eventually find that big pass play because right. Army's gambling, and Army has known now in that first half behind them that they can run the ball. There's success there. The pressure one team feels, the expectation of winning a game, the other is can they continue the streak? And so we're back at the line of scrimmage, first down at the 25. Reynolds gives it off. It goes to Noah Copeland, who had a big first half, and he has the Navy touchdown. Second down nine, a gain of only one. Vern, at halftime, I visited with the Army coaches as they were going into the press box, and I go, and I talked to Chris Smearland, a longtime coach in college football, not just at Army. I said, how are you feeling? He said, I can feel the pressure of trying to get these Army seniors and players the win in this football game. Reynolds, nice catch. G.G. Green climbed the ladder and got that one. He's listed at 5'8". He had to play like 6'3". Yeah, Alex Meyer, I think number 23, was the guy trailing on the play. It wasn't a great throw, but G.G. Green turns around and gets a one-hander and pulls it back in. Still third and short. Remember this. These third down plays with the triple option, there's so many different variations of how you attack. You go fullback, you go option, you go quarterback keep. Reynolds keeps it. Oh, fumble. Oh, big recovery. I think it's Zuzek. Zuzek may have got a better fumble recovery than the one he won the game with. And that game was at Air Force in the end zone in overtime. Nate Combs, number 22, gets the hit. And Zuzek, that one I think is bigger than the one he got. Holy cow, Combs puts his helmet right on the football, and Zuzek steals it at the last second. It does result in a fourth down and six, and Beltran is... On to attempt the punt, Josh Jackson is the deep man. Short, taken at the 41. Wow. Actually, Army caught a break on this one. I thought it was going to be roughing the punter. And then at the end of the play, they get the turnover, and Josh Jackson gives it right back to Navy. Turnovers have been the story of this series since I've been doing it with you, right. Peter Vern. It's been turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. And that is the fifth turnover by Army in this game. I think it was Marcus Thomas that stripped the ball loose, number 26. And Nerthen came up with it. Dive play, Copeland. For the season, Army has fumbled the ball 35 times. They've think lost 19. Those two fumbles back-to-back, -back, as we look at the first half trends, we know that Trent Steelman 
is effective running the football. Keenan Reynolds brings a bit of the passing game. The fullback has been established in the football game. But as we get here and watch the ebb and flow and the pressure of the game, the pressure of the game is going to start to be one of the major factors as we watch the finish. Second down five. Timeout, Navy. Twelve oh four to go, third quarter. The Navy reaction when they recovered yet another fumble. Ten ten game in Philadelphia. Special moment for. These young men at Naval Academy, Ralph Montalvo, who was the third string quarterback for Navy, was critically injured in a one car accident in his hometown in Miami on Thanksgiving night. He's very much in the minds of everyone here with the Naval Academy. For more, here's Tracy. That's right, Vern. They call him Rafi, and he is sorely missed today. To honor him, they are wearing a sticker on their helmets. And to show more support for him, they have this chair down here on the sidelines, draped with his jersey and his helmet next to it, showing that he is here in spirit. There is an Internet page constantly being updated on his behalf, showing how he is improving daily. The most recent update was at 8.30 this morning, and he said he is coming along and also go Navy beat army and our prayers go out to him and his family and we wish him a full recovery Tracy thank you see that uh, Rafi on the back of the helmet of each one of these uh, midshipmen second down five at the army 41 Bo Snelson This time they were ready for Copeland, weren't they? That's uh, Jeffrey Bacon. Well, during the timeout, our, our crew noticed this in the huddle that Keenan Reynolds was flexing his throwing hand pinky finger there. Now, I don't know if it happened when he got stood up on that running play or hit his helmet a little earlier on a throwing pass, but it's something to watch. Third down five, no gain last play. Reynolds six of nine for 63 yards so far and he'll throw on third down maybe uh, a little too far to the left great pressure up front by army and Reynolds did a good job of getting rid of that now what does Navy do do they go for is it four down territory it's a funny spot to punt right at the 40 yard line I'm a, kind of a surprise they didn't run the football there to tell you the truth I think they're gonna probably have to punt it would appear that uh, Ken Niamatololo is going to send his punting unit on on fourth and five. Yeah, a little bit of an odd call for me because I thought they were at the part of the field where they were thinking four down territory. An incomplete pass makes it tough for them to go on fourth down. Well, last time we had this uh, circumstance, Josh Jackson fumbled Beltron with the punt. Delay of game. That's not uh, of much it, it, consequence. Well, really. well, the only thing that you could say is if they drew Army off sides prior to the delay of game, it would have been a first down. Right. Now it won't be. A little safer position for Army. Look, at they're going to bring actually their punt team, return team on. They had their defense still out there prior. Takes a, a bit of an army roll, but it is inside the 10 yard line. Thirty six yard punt and that brings the senior quarterback Trent Steelman back onto the field. How about Trent Steelman on this game?
I'm Army quarterback Trent Stillman, and when I leave West Point, I'll be serving as a quartermaster officer in the United States military. Beat Navy! Army's got the ball in a 10-10 game in Philadelphia. They've got it 92 yards away from the goal line. It's time to bring on the duck. Affleck. And the Affleck trivia question for the day, which three schools, three, have won back-to-back -back Heisman trophies with different players? That's a tough one. Well. Unless you're a certain age. One of the guys was in the booth here, wasn't he? he Yes, he was. No, he wasn't in part they of the back-to-back. Back. No, it was uh, Joe Bellino. Bellino and Roger, Roger not back-to-back. -back. No, they weren't. See, I'm wrong already. <laughs> That's why those questions are hard. Raymond Maples gets the carry. Yeah, there have been only five Heisman winners between these two schools. You've got Bellino and Staubach, and then Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside, Glenn Davis and Doc Blanchard, neither of whom is still with us. They both passed away within the last five years. And Pete Dawkins, who was down on the field talking to Trent Steelman before the game. Here's the handoff right side. Well, you know, this Army team that ran for over 500 yards in their win against Boston College has shown you here today they can run the ball. Mm. I mean, they can run the ball at any I, I, I say, you remember, option teams, even against SEC teams, can run the ball and put up yards. It's a matter of holding on to the football in this game. Here's the toss. Maples around the corner, first down. Well, Gary, they are trying to establish a single game rushing record. If they can uh, keep this up, they will. Goes back to 1945. All right, that was that counter option again. Larry Dixon leading the, the pitch from the, the trailing running back. The Army offense looks a look to me like they have figured. Uh oh, that was a little bobbled right there. That, that looked a little different. Yes. Steelman. And uh, Keegan Wetzel, we haven't called Keegan Wetzel's name much today. Leading sacker this year. This is a young man who, think about this, scored a perfect 1,600 on his SAT when yeah. he took it years ago. Watch this ball. He had it one-handed. Did you see that? He ended up, as he did the fake, keeping the ball right in his right hand. From here, when I watched it the first time, I thought the ball was in the air, but actually, Steelman held it with one hand. The move at the line of scrimmage by Malcolm Brown. Yeah, that was good defense by that front three. Let's look one more time on the previous play when I think Steelman thought the fullback was going to take it. The ball pops out and he holds it with one hand. Watch this. Fake. Oh. Whoa. That's not supposed to happen like that. But now we come with third and, and more than five or six yards. That front three for a Navy stopped it and put it in the third and long. That's the key. And Steelman wants to throw and can't. Had a bust that time. The Army wide receiver did not realize it was a pass play. Frozen at the line of scrimmage. And Keegan Wetzel gets his seventh sack of the year. Yeah, when you're going to throw the ball on third and long, and one of your players, not quite sure who it is, didn't really know what the play was, you could see it. Steelman looked back for the receiver, and nobody was there. Numbers are a little hard to see. Can't quite make it out exactly who it is. Uh, a little hard to see. <laughs> I call them stealth numbers. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I really, here's a fair catch taken. They are really tough from up here in the booth or if you're sitting in the stands. Now, I do realize if you're watching at home. Sometimes, not on that yeah, one. No. <laughs> a little stuff. College football on CBS, Army, Navy. America's game presented by USAA is sponsored by Dodge, Bud Light, Outback Steakhouse, and by USAA. Third quarter in Philadelphia, Army 10, Navy 10. And now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athletes just on cue. Keegan Wetzel makes his first sack of the game. He has a GPA of 3.89 and the first team all academic All-America. And Zach Watts 
with an engineering management major and another first team academic All-America from last year. His GPA 3.46. Red Lobster's commitment to Keenan Wetzel and Zach Watts and to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Toss, left side. Joffrey Whiteside, spelled the same way as Jeffrey Bacon, G-E-O-F-F-R-E-Y. He said, please call me Joffrey. Okay. Kenny Niamalolo, the coach for Navy. He's Easy been for you in to this, say. Yeah, been in this offense so long, raved about Keenan Reynolds, how quickly he picked it up. He said, in the 20 years I've been teaching this offense, he has picked up this offense faster than any quarterback I've ever been around. Reynolds keeps it on the ground. The ball's out. And Army's yeah. got it. Army's got it. Alex Meyer, the freshman, number 23. And I think it was James Kelly, number 49, who made the strip. But Reynolds comes up limping, too. Let's watch that. Comes out. Let's see who strips the ball. It is James Kelly, number 49, and picked up by Alec Meyer. For a turnover in the plus territory for Army. Puts his hand right on the football. Well, we have had a few fumbles, have we not? Here's the toss. Almost mishandled that one. It's Maples again. And Maples, that's his 14th carry. He's over 100 yards. Navy has another player that's down on the field. At the 40-yard line. It's Danny Ring. It is That's, Danny Ring who had such a presence in the first half. Yeah, when you're playing that nose tackle position, you're getting cut from both sides, whether it's the center. Or this time, I think it was Steven Shoemaker, number 50, 70, excuse me. I think it's right here. It comes on a reach block, reaching for him. You're allowed to cut at the line of scrimmage. That's a perfect block, but that is what you risk when you're playing against this offense. Time has been called. Marty Dempsey, 18th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I'm just dropped in to say, go Army, beat Navy. Okay. <laughs> if you can do it with the Queen, you can do it with the General. That's what crossed my mind. <laughs> the General's got a role in the next James Bond movie. Just a little talking point about that block. This is an area of emphasis that college and pro football are looking at, the block below the waist. The option teams are saying this is a staple of our offense. Pro football and college football are talking about the possibility of making all blocks above the waist everywhere on the field. After the injury timeout, second down and seven, a nice defensive play. I think that might have been Wetzel again. It really was. On Raymond Maples. Yes, it was. Wetzel saw the off tackle play, and you know Army's thinking four down territory, and Wetzel stood up and made this third and long. Great play by Wetzel again. Danny Ring getting medical help over on the Navy bench. Third down and four. Tied at 10. Steelman keeps it. Knocked out of bounds with the first down. They call it the load option because sometimes you get the guy that's supposed to be responsible for the quarterback, Wetzel, and you block him. Wetzel's making so many plays looking for the football. This time the slot back, instead of going downfield and getting the secondary, kind of loops out and blocks the guy responsible for the quarterback. The quarterback, it's almost a sweep to the outside. That tackle made by number eight, Wave Ryder. He's there again on top. Now, Gary, we see a lot of fanciful names. Yeah. In college football. 
I think this guy's got the greatest name. He's from Hawaii, yep, and his name that. is Wave Rider. Yeah, I don't think he could go to the Army or Air Force, could he? He had to, if he wanted to go to the academies, he had to go to the Navy. He's a junior. He started since uh, midway through the season, second down and seven. Not surprised. In fact, I was a little surprised early that Army tried to run off the edge. When you take out Danny Ring, you bring in his backup, Bernard Serra, number 77, is in the game. I thought they would run right at the new nose tackle. Army just continued to run at the edge or off tackle. In a tie game, it's third and three. Steelman, first down Army. Well, I tell you, Steelman has been taking those hits as the running quarterback for four years. And if you look at who Army plays and the amount of physical play he has to run, this is not a finesse offense. This is a power offense. And you can almost taste that Navy knows and Army knows this could be the game. Seven points. Big run down at the two, perhaps the one. It's Raymond Maples. This time it was Steven Schumacher pulling around, folding the right guard to the left side and powering it. Army can get a first down on this drive. It's second down and one. Steelman, I don't think so. Looks like he's short. Third and one. And for Army, the Verizon Red Zone stats, 26 of 46, just under the national average. Third down, and I, one. I don't think field goal's enough. Two no. downs, they gotta go for touchdown. Oh my. Oh, wow. And that was almost a total disaster because one of the running backs stopped on the play, and on the pitch play, I, I don't know if one of the running backs didn't hear the snap count or what, but now they've got to go field goal watch. The left side, Malcolm Brown didn't even move. That was messed up. Remember, they only needed a yard and a half to get a first down on plays. A great stop by the Navy defense, but I got to say, Army helped the quarterback sneak in those two plays. Very, very questionable play calling. Osteen to break the tie for a 21-yard field goal attempt. Bolt will hold it. Good snap this time, and Army has taken the lead, but That's not big, anywhere close no. to what they thought they would get. Big win for the Navy defense. When you've got first, second and goal, an opportunity to make a first down, huh, what a stop. Well, coming up later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Let's take another look at that last play before the field goal. All our eyes were confused on this play. I think the left tackle actually moved. It could have been a penalty. Zach Reichert, number 75, he moves his arm. Everybody's kind of moving. That time, Malcolm Brown doesn't know what to do. They got two people running different plays. And no call by the officials. No, that was, well, it was a, it actually was a call that should have gone against the Army, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. they had a, one back in motion, you had your left tackle moving his arm, your left halfback not knowing the play, a disaster for Army. Remember, this was after a quarterback sneak and after Robert Maples took it down to the two-yard line. Well, they got only three. They have a lead, but... Uh... That is a disappointing possession at the end for the cadets. Here's the kick. Marcus Thomas takes a knee, touchback. And uh, Keenan Reynolds was on the bench a moment ago. Let's check in with Tracy. That's right, Gary. You mentioned it after the fumble. He was limping off the field. It's a hamstring injury. He was on the sideline. They wrapped it up. He was running back and forth. He's going to gut it out, though. There's no way he's sitting this one out, guys. Yeah, but, you know, Vern, I remember back to that Notre Dame game 
when Trey Miller was trying to gut it out. He, and as these kids do, I mean, they're, they're type A personalities. They don't want to come off the field. Remember, Trey tried to do a little bit too much and turned the ball over. The Navy coaching staff has to be very careful and watch Keenan Reynolds to see he's not trying to do more than he can do being injured. First down, 10. Rush, Reynolds, elusive, gets out of trouble, and is close for a first down. How about that? Well, I wish I had a bad hamstring like that. <laughs> <laughs> avoids one, avoids two, Ooh, what avoids a move. three to the outside and gets to the sideline just before being pushed out. That was Watts, number 40, who uh, tackled air. And then uh, Combs, number 22, also could not catch him. First down 10. 13 10 Army trying to break a 10 game losing streak in this series. Alex Meyer with the tackle. Second and six. It'll be third down, and let's uh, cue the duck again. The question, which three schools have won back-to-back -back Heisman trophies with different players? How about this? Yale Army with Blanchard and Davis, and Southern Cal with Leinart and Reggie Bush, but Larry Kelly and Clint Frank. For Yale, third down, five. Toss. Well, let's see what the spot Very is. Close. GG Very Green. Close. Oh, it's going to be short. I think it's going to be short. I think so, too. It is fourth down. Tried almost the same play that Army did over there on third down. They ran it properly, got to the outside, but a good enough stop outside to keep it fourth down. Chris Carnegie, another of those freshmen. And a quick, uh, here's a flag. Yeah, the flag. Let's see if this goes. Navy is it, the least. No, this is against Navy. Legal procedure. They are the least penalized team in the country. And they have been for years. They're going to have to punt the ball now. Wow. Yeah, they weren't set when the ball was snapped. They weren't set a second. This was an easy call. And a quarterback trying to do a little bit too much. That's where that inexperience kind of shows right on that play. The Naval Academy averages fewer than four penalties per game. That was their fourth in this one. And Beltran is on to punt. Josh Jackson, number 14, who had a fumble on a punt return earlier, is back. Grabs it at the 25. Cody Peterson made the stop. 36-yard punt, five on the return. Well, the average three per game is fewest in the NCAA. Four today for 30. You can, we talked about the pressure in the second half. You, I actually can feel it. Uh, I mean, you know, so many people, when you got one of these streaks, such a great rivalry like this, remember these players out there know exactly how long this streak has last. Mm -hmm. Steelman pitch. Maples again. And Danny Ring went out with an injury. Let's go down to Tracy and get an update. Yeah, guys, it looked like it looks like the nose guard will be out for the rest of the game. As of now, he has his left ankle taped up with ice, and he's sitting on the sideline. He was in a lot of pain earlier. Unfortunately, it looks as though he won't return, guys. Thanks, Trace. Second down and six. Up the middle, not for much. Maples again. I think it was Barry Dabney that time, or Wes Henderson, 99 or 69. I'm not exactly sure who got it as we take a peek at Danny Ring right there. 
But again, just when you think this Navy defense is giving up a lot of yards, those defensive ends, Henderson, Quisenberry, Dabney make a play. Third down five, 24 seconds to go third quarter. Remember they ran the load option with Trent Steelman carrying the ball in this situation before. Will they come back to that again? He's going to throw it. He's got a man open, and the pass is incomplete. I think Travis Bush came across and made the play on that one. Bush did. It was Patrick Laird, the intended receiver. It was a good call, a good play, and Bush, one of the veterans of this Navy defense, makes the play. Jet ball would have been caught without Bush coming across. Probably should have been caught anyway, but Bush getting there just as the ball did made the play. I'm thinking of our conversation with Army coach Rich Ellerson. He said, well, we don't pass it very well. He said, well, wait a minute. We pass it pretty well. We don't catch it where it's going. On fourth down. Out of bounds. With two seconds to go, third quarter. Here we go. Continue to keep an eye on Keenan Reynolds. Tracy gave the report that he could feel a bit of a hamstring. Will it loosen up? It made a nice scramble on first down. Back in the football game. Is he as loose as he was in the first half? Final play, third quarter. 15 minutes to go. That is the end of three with Army leading Navy 13 to 10. We'll return to Philadelphia right after this word from your local station. To see second would absolutely be a joy. It is going to be hard to hold everything in. Being in front of the court and seeing it second. I couldn't even describe how I would feel. It mean a lot to me. It would mean everything to us. It's kind of that ultimate gift of we made it. If you sing second at the end of this game, that means your team has won. Sentiments expressed at the beginning of the game in that wonderful tease that was voiced by, uh, voiced by Kyle Chandler. So the cadets have not sung second in 10 years. We begin the fourth with Army leading 13 to 10, but maybe as the ball. Ben Lundquist, Gary Danielson, and Tracy Wilson with you from Philadelphia. Second down, seven at the 26. Reynolds pitch, Noah Copeland. It'll be third down. That's such a missed opportunity a while ago. Yeah. I keep thinking back about the fact that they had second down and one for a first and goal and had to settle for three. Well, that's how you keep the streak alive, but I'm trying to phrase this right. When you win 10 years in a row, think about this. That means the senior class for eight consecutive years have either won, never lost or never won in this game. Imagine the emotion going through that four straight years of having somebody say, beat Navy to you, and you haven't done it. Great pass there for a first down. The freshman comes through. That was Reynolds who completed the pass and Matt Aiken who made the grab. Well, he cut his finger. He's got a bit of a hamstring problem, but cross big Matt Aiken, guy who remember started the years we talked about before. That's the second big first down catch that Matt Aiken has come through for for the Navy football team. Ball at the 36 yard line. Reynolds will throw it again, perhaps. Oh, he got outside again. How about this? Wow! That's just bad defense. You, I mean, you just can't let that happen. You have to understand when you're on defense and you let a guy get outside of you in this situation, how can you let that happen? That time, it was Zach Watts. If he plays outside in, the right leverage, that's either a sack or a throw away by Navy. It ends up being a first down.
Quick toss, right side. This is Joffrey Whiteside at a knee. Army has a player down. I wonder if that's Alec Meyer, number 23. It is. He's been all over the football field covering guys, coming up and playing the option. Pass is made out to the outside. Well, it looks like his kind of as he broke down to make the tackle, his knee just collapsed yes. on the play. Time called. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Navy scored first. Noah Copeland, a 12-yard touchdown rush, 7-0 after the extra point. Steelman tied it up on this touchdown run, 7-7 at that time. Navy got a Nick Sloan field goal from 31 yards away to take a three-point lead. And then a career-long Eric Osteen from 41 got a little help from that left upright. And we were tied at 10. And here's Osteen with his second field goal, but really Army had to settle for that field goal. They did have a marvelous opportunity to get the touchdown, and here's Alex Meyer in pain on the uh, Army sideline. Second down. Thomas Holloway, number 29, is on the field in place of Meyer. And his first uh, play from scrimmage on the field. Third down, six. Yeah, that looked a little bit uh, misplayed there by, uh, by Navy. I don't know if they had, oh no, excuse me, everybody going in the same direction, but it still was a positive play. Each possession, because both teams run the ball so much, every possession means so much in the football game. That clock continues to roll. Reynolds will throw. He's 8 of 12. He'll try to throw. He breaks another tackle. And this one is incomplete. Intended for Copeland. <laughs> well, it was supposed to be a pick play. Sliding the fullback, I believe it was the fullback, out in the flat. It got blown up. And it was nothing Keenan Reynolds could do but to scramble. And then he had a chance to again finish with Copeland. But throw into those fullbacks, Vern, we talked about this a lot. You better put it right on them. Those fullbacks do not adjust well to the football in the air. Beltran with five for 37-yard average, well below his per uh, his season average of 45 yards. For a punt, they're coming. He does get it away. And a fair catch called for and taken by Josh Jackson at the 13-yard line. Well, who's going to blink first? Not, Not that, that guy. Fella. Not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same thing. <laughs> That's very high in the no way category. <laughs> College football on CBS, Army Navy, America's game presented by USAA is sponsored by Nissan. Red Lobster. Verizon. And by USAA. We are back in Philadelphia, the 113th playing of Army and Navy. The CBS poll results. If Ohio State were bowl eligible, which team be left out of the championship? Oh, my goodness, look at that. Not, not surprised. No. Oh. That's that uh, SEC fatigue. I don't know if that, that would happen, though. I really don't. I, don't I, I, I think Alabama would be in the game. The defending national champs, I yeah. have to beg the difference. 
First down 10. Not surprised it's voted that way, though. Not at all. <clears throat> but I don't think so. Little dive play. Larry Dixon. Well, Trent Steelman, he has rushed in excess of 100 uh, yards in five straight games. He's not there yet, but he's en route. Highlights for today. Well, is it Trent Steelman's time right now? You know, we've seen quarterbacks step up in the fourth quarter to cement their legacy. Aaron Murray did it just a week ago. Well, Steelman, with his defense, doing a good job. Remember, this Army defense, with all those bad stats, has held Navy to just 222 yards. It's time for the Army offense to win this football game. there was going to be a face mask is there yes There's there a flag is out there uh, looks like Tate got called Josh Tate number 41 but that ball was being waved around Personal again pile. face mask defense number 41 it's a yard down the end of the first down but watch out for the football he gets the face mask but look at the football way out and being handled by Trent Steelman remember ball security and we were just here last year when Army put that drive down, got to about the 25-yard line with about four and a half minutes to go, and they called a second down pass, and it went downhill from there. Yes, it did. Time has been called by Army. 11.21 to go, Army by three. Thirteen ten, Army Tracy. We were curious about that timeout, uh, the call. You got anything more on it? Yeah, I'm standing right here, and I saw Trent Steelman call that timeout himself. He got clocked on that last play and was a little woozy, and so he just needed to take his helmet off and settle himself down again. And Rich Ellerson wasn't even in the huddle with him. He walked away. So that was all Trent Steelman, guys. Well, Army leads it 13-10. This is uh, unexplored territory for them. Look at this. 13 minutes of lead in the second half over the last 11 contests. First down 10. Left side, Maples. A few. Big job by Menard Serra, number 77. He's in as a backup for Danny Ring, and he makes the play right there. Watch Sarah, number 77, come off the center's block, Powis's block, and make the play. Right in the middle of the screen, takes it on, gets rid of him, and makes the tackle. That's wonderful nose tackle play. Second down, eight. It's Malcolm Brown for an Army first down. Beautiful play. A little bit of a change up again by the Army offense. This time they pull the tackle out to block the, uh, the safety on the play. Imagine that on the option play. The change up that time is you pull your tackle and you fill with the slot back. Wes Henderson is the injured uh, midshipman. Hey, the way Army has so many different ways to run the option, this one is really cute. This time, the tackle is going to pull, and the slot back is going to block down. Pull the tackle, run the option, load up, pitch it, and you got your big tackle out here on the safety to run it. Just different ways to run the football. This is, uh, what, the fourth consecutive year we've done this game together. I never expected to hear you use cute it is in cute. an Army-Navy game. <laughs> it is interesting how many different variations, if you run the same offense year after year, you can come up with to run the same play. Maples, a lot of room. Another Army first down. And that's going to put Army over 300 yards rushing in the football game. Another 10-yard run. And you can almost feel it right now as Tracy called that first that timeout by Trent Steelman. This drive could be the game. Yes. You get a touchdown here with the clock the way it is. Could this be enough to be only too many points and with the time left for Navy to come back? Here's Steelman, the fourth-year senior. From Bowling Green, Kentucky. Wanted to play Division I football. This was his only 
opportunity. He tosses to Malcolm Brown. And Matt Warwick makes the tackle, but he makes it about seven or eight yards downfield. Another successful play. You know, it used to be when you watched Army play that they would run more uh, plays that looked like option that weren't. But it looks like now in crisis time, they're going to the option play. Second down five. Again, he's got room, and again, he's got a first down. They will stop the clock while the chains are moved, and then it will start again. Well, we mentioned Gary and I met this young man. Tracy did as well. His freshman year, he's the first Army quarterback to ever start in this game four years in a row. He's yet to win. So, as Gary just said, is this his time? Almost left West Point. Only a week or two in. And his dad talked him out of it. His father, Bob, played uh, as a wide receiver at Appalachian State. And here's a military connection. His dad, Bob, his physician coach was Fisher DeBerry. Wow. Who uh, later became the legendary coach at Air Force. Trent Steelman. Second and nine. Another big stop by that Navy front, though. Put it in second and long. Everybody knows a field goal is not the game. A touchdown could be. Steelman, not this time. That was a good no pitch there. Right. Matt Warwick again, who was so huge in that game a year ago. Quasel Bertrand, number 17, was up covering the pitch man. Handled at the line of scrimmage, gets outside, but if he pitches it, nothing would be there. Bertrand, now is it four down territory? Third and seven. Odd-looking formation. This is the first time no, uh, Army has shown this formation in the game. No backs in the field. Five on the play clock. Inside give. And It'll be fourth down. They went gimmick. I don't un quite understand it. They didn't trust their offense. Got down in that situation, and they went gimmick. They went gimmick near the goal line, and they went gimmick on that play. And now they set up a field goal try. It keeps Navy in the game. Again, inside, Bernard Serra, number 77, coming out. Next man up. That's what they say, and he has come through again. Eric Osteen, who had not kicked a field goal until the last game against Temple. He's two for two today. This is from 37 yards away. But it keeps Navy in the game. It really keeps Navy in the yes, game. It does. I'll tell you, the play calling when Army was near the goal line and the play calling here from the 25-yard line in was questionable. Another bad snap. And Osteen pulled this one left. It's still 13-10 Army. Back in Philadelphia, we invite you to stay tuned after the game for the Jeep postgame show on CBS Sports. You know, as we talk about Army's offense, you really have to salute that Navy defense. The goal line stand down here, the stop down on the other way. That's two straight stops by the Navy defense. Buddy, uh, those guys on defense standing tall. I mean, that's the football game. Those two drives right there. Right. The Navy defense kept it alive. And now as Navy gets in there on offense, can they get one drive to steal a football game? Well, with the game hanging in the balance, perhaps, Army just went 11 plays, had the ball for five minutes and eight seconds, and came away empty. First down and 10. There's the first defensive play, the stop made by Robert Coe of Army. You can see the defense, Coe just crashing from his defensive end position. Coe's right there, I believe. Crashes in, takes the fullback. As Coach Ellerson told Tracy, it's assignment football. When he crashes, he has to pull back, and he did it perfectly. Six and a half to go. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. Shotgun. Yes. Reynolds drills it right side. Wow. 
Bo Snelson, the senior co-captain. Third and eight. Well, he had it, would have picked it up. Might not have been a first down, but Snelson in the slot right just goes out to the flat right there. Easy pass from the shotgun. He went to the right player. And Snelson cannot come up with the catch. Third down eight. We're gonna go pistol shotgun again. Reynolds with a lot of time, fires it, it's caught. First down, Navy. You Joffrey Whiteside. A lot of time. The Navy offensive line, at, you know, they spend 99% of their time in practice run blocking. Here, they pass protect well and allow Reynolds to step up and make an easy throw to Whiteside coming across a big first down. The ball now at the 32, Whiteside's second reception. Two receivers, top of the screen. G.G. Green is in motion. Reynolds is going to throw again. Maybe. Not Boy, he's done again. that about four times. And this one is incomplete. Wow, he's elusive, isn't he? He really is. I think it was Zach Watts again that Reynolds kind of juked on the play to get outside of him. Watch him in the pocket, unblocked that time. Oh, that's a superior athlete uh, getting outside the pocket that time. Matt Aiken was the intended receiver. It's second and 10 with 545 to go in the game. Not out again. Oh my gracious. That. Got out past two guys that time. I think it was Bacon and Pierce. Neither one of them. You gotta have leverage. You need to go where your help is. Two defenders to the outside. Listen, this cannot happen. You got two guys, they both go for it. Gets outside two defenders. You gotta force them to your other guy where you got help. Another running first down. And the freshman is making the plays. Again, deep right side, man coverage. Brandon Turner. Chris Carnegie had good coverage on him. One on one, Turner, who was suspended for the Notre Dame game because he did not pass his physical. Upset with the coach comes back and in the army game gets an opportunity to make the catch at the highest point brandon turner was the go-to man when they needed it that was a gain of 49 yards first and goal at the eight with 450 remaining reynolds slips the tackle goes for the corner touchdown navy Freshman, would you say? You think? There's only one piece of good news for the Army team that collapsed is there's four minutes and 40 seconds to go in the game, and it's four down territory right now. Nick Sloan is on for the extra point. He broke containment twice. After he hit a first down pass before they had him pinned, that would have been third and long. It's the second, third time he's done this in the game and then throws the fade. Pretty decent coverage down the sideline by Carnegie. You're not going to stop that. And then he runs right through Robert Coe's tackle on the play and gets it into the end zone. You don't see many true freshmen do that. Exactly two minutes and 16 seconds ago on the clock. It looked like 
the game was armies and uh, bingo. Oh, yeah. I mean, just think about this. I mean, it's likely that a redshirt freshman Johnny Manziel will win the Heisman. Last week when we did the SEC championship, there were four or five different true freshmen that were impacts in that football game. And now Keenan Reynolds is doing it at the Naval Academy. He did it to Air Force in the fourth quarter to set up this game for the Commander-in-Chief trophy, and he just did it to Army. But Trent Steelman, the senior, is going to have one more chance. Short kick. Uh -oh. oh, dear. Well, he survived it. Yeah. Oh, it. He just made a milkshake out of sour cream. Yes, he did. Oh. Wow. The touchdown again, Gary. Just a keep all the way. Ran right through the tackle by Robert Coe and gets it into the end zone. Ran it to the they call the short side of the offense. Kenny Niamatololo that time says, you know what he said, thank you, Lord. Yes, he did. 434 to go. First down, that 10. Look right. That didn't look right, did it? Sometimes pressure to accomplish to something. Snap. All start, offense, number 75, five yards, still first down. Yeah, inside, Stephen Shoemaker. It's getting very noisy. They're right on the side of the field, playing right to the midshipman over there. It's yes. got to be his noisiest part on the field. Three penalties on Army. First down, 15, 4.34 to go. They do have timeouts, two timeouts remaining. Again. I thought the left guy I was off that too. time. No I, thought, flag. I thought Frank Allen might have jumped that one. But again, now instead of it being second and six or seven, it's second and 10 or 11. Big difference. Caught a glimpse of Pete Dawkins, the Heisman Trophy winner, alongside Rich Ellerson there. Second down, 10. And they're going to take a burn of time out here. I mean, it, it, it has been a, a self destructive finish here for Army. So much riding, and they've been not been able to take advantage of it. Second down 10 with 4.06 to go. Army used a timeout. They have one remaining. They trail by four, and they are a long, long way from the goal line. For that timeout, Army is basically committed that this is the ball game. They can't punt. Second down, 10. Steelman. It'll be third down, three or four, depending on the spot. Cody Peterson made the tackle. Just remember again, the first down false start. Instead of this being third and four, that would have been a first down. Two more downs. Can Navy find a way to make a big play up front? Pitch, Maples. Uh, let's see where they spotted. I think yeah, he, he got, got it. it. Yes, he did. That's a huge first down, and here we go. And I thought that's the play that Army would go to. Remember I said they're running the option. When they got down the other side of the field, I thought this was the play they would go to. They went a little bit gimmicky, and they paid the price. That possession ultimately led to a missed field goal, and then the consequent drive led by Keenan Reynolds for the go-ahead touchdown. First down, 10. Pitch. Malcolm Brown, right side. Second down and three. I don't think they really have to think pass yet. They really don't. Break one play to the, you know, for eight or 10 yards again. They're still able to run their regular offense. They give it off to the fullback. There it is. Larry Dixon. Stops the clock. Get up there and get ready. Get up there and get ready. Gain of 12. This is where you got to have the base play. Just run your base play. Snap it as soon as the umpire moves away and the clock starts. I'm going to throw it. He is. Steelman. Wide open. Oh, what a tackle. 
Siobhan Lawrence, boy, that saved a bunch. Quazel Bertrand. He sure did, because he's going to get another eight or ten yards on that play if Bertrand doesn't make the shoestring tackle. Oh, he was crawling for it, too, and got him right on the ankle with one hand. He had slipped down in the play, and he crawled for the stop. 2.33 remaining. Ball at the 40. He'll throw again. He's got a man open again at the 30. It's Siobhan Lawrence and for the second down. time in the first down. Well, there's no backup in this man. Trent Steelman has showed you, no matter how this thing ends up, what a winner and leader he is. That was a gain of 12, 221 to go. What a fascinating contrast. A freshman that doesn't want to let down the seniors and the senior that has never won. Dixon, one more time. We near two minutes. Almost the same spot on the field a year ago. 25-yard line last year was four and a half minutes to go. This year, it's under two minutes. Second and six. Big hole just short of the first down. Raymond Maples with his 27th carry in the ball game. Yeah, but Travis Bush made the big tackle to keep that, I think, from being a first down. Watch Bush come up, wrap him up, and keep that ball short of a first down. Here's Steelman. He'll keep it. He's got a first down that'll clock the, uh, stop the clock with 1.18 remaining. Remember the touchdown against Boston College. Army was stopped by Boston College with two minutes to go. They got it back with a minute to go. And Trent Steelman iced the game with an option play to the left. Army still has one timeout remaining. Well, Nothing doing it. on he this one. It. He fumbled the ball. Who I got it? Navy has it. Larry Dixon fumbled it. Barry Dabney recovered it. Fumbled it on first down. Hmm. And the fullback thought the quarterback had it, and the quarterback thought the fullback had it. Four years of work, a year of prep school. So many injuries, so many hits running this offense. An opportunity down to the 15-yard line on first down to finally be able, as we've been talking about, sing second. And it's the turnovers again. Play is being reviewed. I'm not even going to pretend I know what he's going through. They practice every morning at 6 a.m. They study probably till 11 or 12 midnight, and they've been doing it for four years. What a contrast in emotions. Joy and enormous sorrow. Play was uh, held up. Navy will not have to run a play. No. Timeout called by Army. That's their last. For the third straight year, Trent Steelman's offense has outgained Navy and ended up with an L. Gary, you said almost three and a half hours ago, turnovers will decide this game. Yep. 
Mundy put the ball six times on the field. They got a little lucky early, not late. Well, it was a mix-up on the exchange, I think. Trent Steelman thought Dixon had it. And he walked off the field in absolute despair. No, I don't root for anybody, but I, 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 I was kind of rooting for him. Yep. Forty-four seconds to go. It's third and thirteen. And what did Kenny Niamatololo say about playing at the Air Force Academies? Playing football is the easiest thing these guys do. Right. Niamatololo is looking for Trent Steelman right now. Anybody that's under, ever played sports understands what this young man's going through right now. Keenan Reynolds showed up on that last drive, though, didn't Ooh. he? Let's go down to Tracy, who's with Ken Niamatololo. What a game, Coach, and I just saw you looking around trying to find Trent Steelman. What did you want to say to him? He's a heck of a player. You know, four years he's been here. He's done a great job. You know, wishing the best of luck. Got a ton of respect for those guys in black uniform. They're tough suckers. You know, and uh, happy for our guys. Rafi, this is for you. From a senior quarterback to a freshman quarterback and what Keenan Reynolds did to lead you guys to another win over Army. What can you say about his performance tonight? The kid's been like that all year. You know what I mean? Just unbelievable young man, great character. You know, it didn't look too good for us. Find a way to get done in the fourth quarter. And you win the Commander in Chief Trophy. What does that mean to this academy? We're looking forward to going to the White House. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. All right, Tracy, thank you. Final score, Navy wins it. 17-13. Vern, the seniors talked about their word they took for them the whole year was deserto. It's Latin for finish the fight. I believe they finished the fight. For the 11th consecutive year, however, Navy will sing second. General Odierno leading the way over.
colleagues continue to try to comfort Trent Steelman. Rich Ellerson is coach. It's painful to watch. Oh my God. I've never been through anything like this. I've had tough ones myself, but nothing like that. At one point, we got a glimpse of Ken Niamatololo, who did catch up with Trent Seelman and was able to try to commiserate with him. This was Ken Niamatololo a moment ago. I love that Nate Combs has his arm on his jersey. His brother, he's not going to leave his brother now. Commander in Chief Trophy. Vice President Biden there. I'm reminded that Tracy said that thing weighs 170 pounds. Well, the weight of the world was on that guy, and you could yeah. see the emotions just draining right through him. If you can't make it to the game, please consider donating tickets for midshipmen or enlisted servicemen so they can attend the game. was the presentation of the commander in chief trophy and let's take you back to the play of the game no question about it army was driving for the go ahead touchdown they had a first down and 10 it's time for the napa auto parts play of the game with the call here's bob sosi from navy steelman under center inside give dixon the fullback carries ball pop loose ball loose with the navy throw Paris gains of the mids, signaling the Navy recovered. Josh T does the same, and they were right! Fumble the Navy! And uh, Trent Steelman trying valiantly to lead his team to victory and end a 10-game losing streak. It was not to be because of the miscue with under 15 yards to go. Now let's take a look at the player of the game presented by Russell Athletic, Keenan Reynolds. She's with 
He is with Tracy Wilson. Well, thanks so much. And Keenan, you only heard about the Army Navy game, but now to be able to experience it, what was it like? Uh, it's a one of a kind experience. You know, uh, I'm just so blessed to be in the position that I'm in. And, uh, you know, I just got to give all my glory to God. You know, he, he brought me this far. And uh, he didn't he didn't leave me or forsake me. And uh, my teammates, you know, they kept me up. Had a turnover late in the game. And, uh, you know, they kept me up. You know, they uh, kept encouraging me. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to play with anybody else. Tremendous job. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Bye. And the Russell Athletic Player of the Game, Keenan Reynolds, 10 of 17. He led them to the go-ahead drive. A brilliant pass to Brandon Turner, and then he scored the go-ahead touchdown. So for Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Philadelphia. The final score, 17-13, Navy. The streak is now 11 years in a row. The Jeep Post Game Show is up next after these messages and a word from your local stations.